Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to take some of your suggestions to further improve the dust collection on this miter saw. So stay tuned and check it out. Alright, so on my previous video when I made this dust shroud right here, um, a lot of you guys left a comment saying that I should also try to hook a vacuum hose up to this dust port back here. And I think that's a good suggestion. So. I'm going to do that and a few other things to try to further improve the dust collection on my miter saw. Alright, so on mine, and I'm sure most of the miter saws out there, there's this dust port near the back of the saw blade. And uh, it's kind of an odd size, but I went to the hardware store and I picked up a few different PVC fittings, um, some hose clamps there, and one of them that I picked up was this inch and a quarter uh, elbow. And it happens to fit perfectly tight on there and I can I can push that on a little bit tighter but I think that's gonna be the starting ground for it then I picked up this uh, reducer or in my case it's gonna be actually an increaser to hook up to there and make it so that I can go from approximately an inch and a quarter to uh, two inch PVC and then I'm going to probably mount that through the surface of the table and with this reducer on the back of here, um, then I can run a two inch flex hose in between those. And then off this other arm, either one of the arms, I'm going to come off here with another little elbow and then run another flex hose between there and this port and kind of get rid of this uh, crappy setup right there with the, with the tape there. So let's get down to business. First, I used a blowtorch to heat up the reducer in order to make it fit around the elbow. With that fit snugly on the back of the saw, I took the splitter and marked out where to cut the hole through the top surface. Then I used a Forstner bit in the trim router to make the hole in the surface. Next I cut down some 2 inch PVC into some smaller pieces to use as fittings between the other PVC pieces and the flexible vacuum hose, securing those in place using hose clamps. Then it was time to connect all the pieces and cut the flex hose to length. One flaw with the dust hood that I made in the first video is that the dust would bounce off the back surface and then exit out the front. So I needed to fix that. So basically the sawdust was bouncing off the back and all of it that wasn't being sucked up through the vacuum port uh, was bouncing off the back and coming out through this gap here. Basically I just need a piece on the front here that will come to about there. And it looks like I got some leftover thin scraps of wood and it's about the perfect height. So let me cut this to length and then I'll glue it on there, repaint it, and that should solve that problem. I had to modify it a little bit more than just a simple rectangle. There's a little angle on that side. There's a tab on the back of this fence that goes back in an angle here, so that's what this cutout is for. Uh, but other than that, it just slips in there and now I just gotta glue it. I'll probably epoxy it to the rest of this, let that set up, and we're good to go. Some super glue and epoxy secured the new piece in place. Now you can see that a lot less dust is exiting out the front of the hood. For this next addition, I needed some plywood pieces that were slightly bigger than the scraps that I had on hand. And I really didn't want to cut into a fresh sheet of plywood. So instead, I used some dowels to join two smaller pieces together. Then I took that piece of plywood to the table saw to cut out the two side pieces for the large dust hood.
Then I cut the top and a stretcher piece out of plywood and added some pocket holes in order to connect everything together. Now this next part is my attempt at upcycling. So I had this old dehumidifier in the basement. Uh, the compressor went out on it, so it was basically junk. But I know that the fan on it kicks out quite a bit of air. So I brought it up into the shop and I disassembled basically the whole thing. And all I really had to do was rewire it a little bit. Um, it had a couple different fan speeds to it, but I just hooked it up to the highest fan speed. Let's go ahead, plug this in and see if it works. Sweet. Now let's take this over to the miter saw and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with it. All right, so the plan with this fan is you can see this is where the air exits this enclosure. And so I'm going to stick it up right back here and just cut a hole in the side panel so the air has somewhere to exit. But I'm going to need to build some type of front face um, enclosure and then add a filter here so I'm not just throwing the dust out the side but the idea is that once I have a, like a front face on this whole enclosure as it is that um, hopefully this will kind of backdraft the air through this fan and kick it out the side hopefully collecting even a little bit more dust if possible. This is my first attempt at adding a filter to the fan but I wasn't really happy with it and it was too big for the space. Then I decided to use the filter assembly from the dehumidifier. First, I cut that out using a sawzall and smoothed it all down. Then I traced along the outside of the fan onto some plywood and cut that out at the bandsaw. Next, I attached some blocks of wood to the fan so that I could attach the fan to the plywood face. Then I added the filter to the plywood face using some super glue. With that in place, I cut some smaller filler pieces and glued those in place before busting out the bondo to smooth out the transitions. And this was pretty satisfying. Finally, I painted the whole assembly with some black spray paint. I attached the filter assembly to a piece of plywood and secured that in the back corner. And with the flexible hose, um, everything still moves around fine. This back arm doesn't contact the filter, which is awesome. Um, so I'm pretty happy with this so far. Then I cut a hole in the side panel and put a grill over the hole. Since I didn't wire a switch to the fan, I used this remote outlet instead and it worked out pretty well. Finally, it was time to add the front panel. I began by making a template out of paper. And once I had this template made, I removed it and then I transferred it to a thin sheet of wood, cutting it out using a jigsaw. To keep the front panel in place, I used some screws and magnets. I first countersunk the screws enough that the magnets would also sit flush with the front surface. Once that was done, I applied some super glue to the magnets and then stuck the front panels to the magnets. Same as the other side, only one stuck, that's okay. Now at least I know where these marks are from the glue. I'll just pop those magnets out and stick them on those marks. Mm -hmm. 
Once the super glue had dried, these front panels snapped in place really nicely. All right, so just a quick recap on everything that I've added. So first of all, I added a second uh, vacuum hose to this backside here. So there's this port coming out over here. Added that hose there. So I got this one and I've got this one down low. Hopefully between the two of those, they can collect the majority of the sawdust right away. After that, I added this filter back up here in this back corner. So that's just gonna suck all the air out uh, hopefully collect a lot more air, bring it back through this way, and then filter through there and shoot it out the side, hopefully collecting any particles that aren't collected by the, the two hoses right away. And I've connected that filter to a remote outlet, so... Pretty easy there. A small adjustment to the first dust hood is I've added this front lip onto it, so before there was sawdust that was hitting the back of this and then shooting out the front. Now that's eliminated that even more. And lastly, lastly, I've added these two front pieces. And what this front panel does is it restricts where the air can come in through. So what I mean by that is without this front panel on, the air can come in really anywhere within this two foot by four foot opening. But with the panel on, the air is restricted to coming in just in this area right around the saw. So what that means is any air that's sucked in through here, through the filter in the back, is going to come in here right around the saw, hopefully pick up some more dust particles and filter it all back through there. That's the idea anyways. <laughs> and if I do need to tilt the saw or uh, rotate the saw at all, these just pop off really easily. Just like that. Finally, I wanna finish up by making a couple cuts on here just to see if all this work has improved uh, the dust collection in any way. Um, again, there's not gonna be anything really scientific about this. I'm just gonna kinda compare what it was previously to how much sawdust I see out on this front surface. So, let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I'm pretty impressed with that. Really, there's just a little bit of dust right here some down here um, and some on the other side. I, I mean, compared to nothing, compared to just having this hood on the back, uh, it's a pretty big improvement, I think. Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching and all the suggestions. I think everything that was done here really helped improve the dust collection on this miter saw and I really appreciate everybody's input from the last video. And if you guys have any further suggestions, please make sure to leave those in the comment section down below. Maybe I'll make a third video. I can't think of anything else to do to this, but I'm sure somebody has some ideas. If you guys enjoyed this video, it'd be awesome if you could hit that like button down below. That just tells YouTube that this was a decent video and that maybe it should pass it on to some other people to watch. And if you aren't already, consider hitting that subscribe button down there as well. That way you're notified every time I release a new video. Again, thanks for watching and until next time.